Hey guys, so to go with the gym theme that I'm doing in our upstairs room, um, now we're going to build a dumbbell rack that I want to mount on the wall. It's going to be something like this. This was my first attempt. I messed it up, I broke it because I was using the wrong tools to cut it. First I tried to cut it with the uh, rotary tool, which was working out great until the bit broke off. This thing just overheats and doesn't go. I tried to use the reciprocal saw, which cracked the end over here. So now we got a jigsaw, and this is what's going to help us do the job right. So I have this template that I made, just freehand sketched it, measured it against the weights we have, and it looks like it's going to do the job. In the test one already, we're going to make two of these except full size eight racks, and they're going to go side by side like this, and the weights will hang on it on the wall. So. I might post this up on my site if you guys want to download it. You can honestly sketch yourself. Um, what I would suggest, the heavier weight you go, make it thicker and bigger. I'm using three quarters plywood, which I'm hoping will be stronger than regular wood. Um, and that's it. We'll trace this on the board, eight pieces, and we'll go from there. So let's get it done. So all we're gonna do here is start tracing this. And I made this long enough so there's enough spacing when this one's on top of this one for the weights to go in. The weights I'm gonna have is 20, 15, 8, 4, and 3, I think. Those are the only dumb, loose dumbbell, dumbbells we have that we're gonna mount, and which is um, plenty for light gym ups, upstairs. So, all I'm gonna do is make this nice and flush here and just trace it. And just keep going. We're gonna go up to eight, like this, since we have four sets of weights. And we're gonna do make two of these. So I'll finish tracing and we'll continue with the cutting. Right, we got it all traced out. Now we're gonna cut along the lines and get it into shape. regular so to cut this straight line This is gonna be our last one. And the reason I'm not cutting all these at once is because once I start cutting here with uh, this saw, I don't want all the motion possibly cracking or breaking anything. That's why I was doing it one by one. Cut this out, then cut the straight cut. There we go. 
go to two pieces. We're gonna sand them, um, clean them up, and see what we got here. All right, guys. So we got both of them cut out. And what you wanna do is compare them to make sure everything's pretty much even over here. No imperfections, and it looks pretty good. So the technical is gonna be mounted to a backboard, separate it, and then the weights will go inside. But first, we gotta sand it. Use one of these to get the surface. And then by hand, we're gonna get into the corners one by one round over to now smooth it out i'm using 220 grit which is perfect then i'm probably going to paint it or maybe plastic dip it with um spray cans uh that leaves a nice surface i'm going to do a black to match the gym so that's it we'll get started and we'll move on to the next step all right so we got these guys sanded nice and smooth they match up pretty good it doesn't have to be perfect but you know you want it as close as possible. So now what we're gonna do is mount this to a backboard. You can mount it two ways. You can mount it on the side, or you can mount it on top of the board. And then this backboard is what's gonna go onto the wall to secure it. So we wanna measure the spacing of all your dumbbells to make sure that the biggest and the smallest one will fit. If we make this fit just this big one, then the small ones will not be fitting correctly. As you can see, the spacing is different. So I'm going to measure the smallest one and the four inches. So I want to have a four inch space in between these two beams. Which means I'm going to actually go a little bit under for three and three quarters or probably even less. So you can see need to go small let's go three inches yep that's gonna be good actually I gotta go a little smaller because it has a little dents here so let's go about two and a half That's gonna work and obviously that's gonna work just fine for the 15 and the 20s so we're gonna do two and a half inch spacing in between the boards cut this off pre-drill holes screw it together i'll be using a little wood glue back here for extra and it should be good since i'm gonna have a tight space here i'm probably gonna plastic dip this first so i have the inside done um, and then we'll assemble it. So I'll cut it to shape, pre the little holes, plastic dip it, and then we'll assemble it. So I want to show you guys how I'm gonna do the holes. First, I'm gonna line this up with the edge, outline it. And I'm gonna put a screw with just every single beam sticking out. So all I'm gonna do is start a roller mark it like right about in the middle of each so pre-drill pre -drill the holes and then we'll do the next side Basically, I measured two and a half inches from where this side ends to here, and then outline this beam. I'm gonna do the same thing with the drill holes. Just mark each one, and then we'll drill them. Well, first I'll cut this piece off, and then I'll drill it. So I'm just pre-drilling one and one eighth bit. Once we do that, we'll follow the holes of this counter stick or whatever it's called on the back so the screws sit flat inside. Once we finish.
finish this, we'll plasti dip everything, and then we'll be able to assemble. So here's the fun part, uh, plasti dipping. Um, a little cooler than uh, spray paint, it's gonna leave like a rubberized texture, it'll be better for gripping things, in this case it's more for shell, uh, and it'll be more flexible when you put in the weights on it. I mean, at least I'm hoping. Um, don't do this in cold weather because it settles, so you're gonna have to warm it up in a bowl of warm water if it's cold outside. So the springtime, summertime is the best time to do this. I believe it's like you gotta be above 60 degrees. Just read the directions. You know, there could be different brands. There's variations of this, you know, so just read the directions and follow it. Um, we're gonna do about three or four layers. Um, and I think I should do it. So let's give it a try. A few leftover cans from doing the rims on my car, which I'll make another video of, uh, which came out really good, so. We're gonna go with these. Even if you have imperfections, the cool thing about this is it does settle in and blend in somehow. So, um, pretty easy to work with. Especially since we do multiple coats, we'll be able to fix any mistakes. And it dries pretty fast. They say 30 minutes, but usually 10, 15 minutes I change the coat. That will depend on humidity and so on. It's almost empty, so. Problems with I'm not gonna bore you with this, we'll get this done and then assembly. Here is what it looks like after two coats. So as you see, we're gonna need at least a couple more to give you good coverage. Um, this is the second one drying right now. You can still see a lot of creases showing and so we'll get in more detail with this tomorrow as it's getting dark now here we are about four five coats looks pretty good i only had leftover cans of plasti dip so that's what i'm doing for now maybe when i assemble it i'll hit it with a few more so i got pretty good coverage so we'll wait a few hours and then assemble All right, guys, this is all dried out. Five, about five coats. Looks good. Now we're gonna assemble it. We already have the pre drilled holes. So we're gonna line this up and just connect them using two inch screws, uh, which should give us enough hold. You can go two and a half if you want. That's what I had handy. Everything I'm going here is whatever I had handy in the house. I didn't go looking for stuff. You can obviously purchase exactly what you need to make it perfect. So we're going to start at this end. I want to line this up even. So I'm going to do a pilot hole for the first one. Go one by one like that, and then hit the second side. So we'll get that down the other side, and we'll be all good. Last one, and we are good. This will hold four dumbbell sets, eight racks total. Now we're gonna go find a spot to put this on the wall, mount it up, and see if all works. Thanks for watching so far. All right, so our rack is 
gonna be going right here. First thing you gotta do is find the stud. So borrow, you get yourself a stud finder. These things are about 10 bucks. This is a really old one, but it does just the job just fine. Follow the directions. Find your stud. See where you wanna mount it. I put a little screw here, which is gonna act as a holder for this. And I'm gonna mount this with three bolts. So I already pre-drilled the holes where the bolts are gonna go in. Now you wanna find the center of your stud, find the center of this, line it up. Level it. And then mark the spots with a pencil where your screws are gonna go so you can do pilot holes in the wall. something down here so it catches a little debris so you don't get dirt on your floor if you have carpets or something. Alright, now we can mount it. Very simple. If you're going to be using heavier weights than myself, probably building a little heavy to the right, use a bigger bolts, longer bolts. These are two and a half inch which is, which is fine for this setup. But bigger is always better. So we say, right? extension to get in between these if you're using a drill and the screws. So check it again. Okay, so you see my hole through there so I know I'm good. You can feel the pulling against the wall. That's it guys, our rack is installed. This thing's not going anywhere. So let's get our weights on. Like I told you, I have 20s. Put the fifteens. And then some old school eights. Fours. And there we go. Off the floor, so I got the floor space still. The cool thing about this is if you don't use it as a weight rack, you can use it as a wine rack. It fits a wine bottle perfectly. Thanks for watching and come back for more videos.